the experience below is without a shadow of a doubt the most amazing thing that ever happened to me. Unfortunately, every human language is by far too poor to describe it as it exists in my mind. Only those who have experienced similar things can try to understand it. My friends and I have been smoking salvia for the past several months, taking long breaks after each trip. My latest experience took place at my friend's house and included three of my friends and I. We divided one gram of a bottle of salvia five times extract into eight equal doses so that instead of having 10 standard doses, we'll have eight strong ones. All the lights were off and each put the music of his choice when it was his turn to smoke. We decided that only two people would be in the room at the same time not only for the purpose of always having a sitter present, but also to keep the room as quiet as possible during the trips. My background music was Liquid Tension Experiment, an instrumental progressive rock band whose slow songs are perfect for salvia trips. I put my entire dose in one bowl, inhaled deep, and kept the smoke in my lungs as long as I could. Barely able to move, I forced myself to take the second and last hit. I laughed like crazy for a few seconds and then lay on the bed. Sally hits me like a truck. 10 seconds hadn't passed before I was sucked into an alternative reality. I felt as though I entered a new and much more incredible version of Walt Disney's Fantasia. I was surrounded with hundreds of creatures from dozens of species which resembled each other only by their green-yellow colors. Creatures flew over and around me, creating an astonishing visual display. Dances that no choreograph can imitate. Images that no computer or human could ever create. The sounds of their flight and their brushing against each other just added a strong auditory effect. Hundreds of voices spoke in unison, calling me to join them. I felt confused and told them that I cannot move like them, fly like that in the air. I felt unwieldy and ungainly compared to the creatures that moved around me in such charm and jauntiness. The last thing I heard before I joined the wave of creatures which had already grown from several hundreds to several hundreds of thousands, was that I could do anything, if only I want it hard enough. Even though I hadn't done any special attempt to join the wave, at a certain point I realized that I was already in it. I was uncontrollably carried towards an unknown destination. For hours... I was surrounded from every direction and as far as I could see by those creatures. I often wondered as to where I was being carried. After a while, everything stopped moving. The flow of images and the sounds had disappeared and was replaced with a clear white scenery. The only thing in the endless white was a small dot of light. As I came closer to the light, I began to notice some sort of character in it. It had the general features of a tall, thin woman, whose long dress, perhaps a wedding dress, surrounded her in a diameter of a few meters. I was possessed by a strong urge to reach her, which caused me to advance forward despite her strong, blinding light. At a certain point, I could advance no more. I felt as though some invisible barrier had been put in front of me, and that the only way I could pass through it was by receiving the luminous character's approval. After a long waiting, she let me in. To both my surprise and amazement, when I took a step forward, the light faded, and an overwhelming place was revealed to me. If heaven exists, I now know what it looks like. Every verbal or written description can only diminish from the perfection and splendor of what I saw. So I won't go into details. Basically, 
it wasn't very different from the classic image of heaven. Except for the fact that everything, the grass, the trees, the flowers, and even the earth and the sky was alive, breathing. So far, I was still me in every possible aspect. I had a physical body. I responded to stimulations from the environment. I could see, smell, speak, etc. At that point, I felt that something was beginning to change, both physically and mentally. Communication with the woman, whom I repeatedly asked questions about my whereabouts, stopped being verbal. Every question I asked and every answer I was given were all done telepathically. I knew that I was going through some sort of change, but I didn't know what it was. Every second, I felt that another part of my being had been taken away from me, beginning with my physical body and then gradually all five senses. I was going in tremendous speed towards something unknown. When the process was complete, I realized what happened to me. I felt that I got a chance to be, perhaps for just a short while, at the peak of the world. I got a glimpse at what people aspire their entire lives to reach, true spiritual enlightenment. I know it sounds like a worn out cliche, but that's what I honestly and truly felt. All I can do is think. All my essence and existence are thought. Earthly needs such as food, water, and sex no longer exist. All five senses no longer function, and I no longer need them. I'm no longer restricted by my brain and body's abilities and inabilities. I'm now at the purest and simplest, yet also the most liberated form of existence. This utter simplicity is what grants me such bliss such variety of possibilities and, above all, absolute freedom of mind. And in fact, freedom in the truest meaning there is. My entire world is my thoughts. Many things I've known in the past are neither needed nor existent in my new reality. Memory is no more than a myth to me. All my recollections are spread in front of me, waiting for me to merely squint in their direction in order to fully relive them. Biological processes and psychological barriers don't even slightly restrict me. I even had access to prenatal memories, which I experienced shortly for lack of interest. As fascinating as it may seem now, at the time I had no special desire to explore such memories. What I remember from those memories is the feeling of being attached to the wall of the universe, accompanied by feelings of confidence and of indecisiveness about the perception of self. Almost complete loss of ego. My sense of time was completely distorted. As a matter of fact, as I see it, time is now relative to the speed of my thought. The first thing that comes to mind is the analogy of dog years to human years. My current time is not at all like the time in my normal everyday reality. The difference is extreme. It is as if my default movement and I do hope I'm being understood, is now done at the speed of thought, a speed much greater than the speeds of sound and of light multiplied by each other. Two minutes in my present condition are equivalent to several months in our everyday reality. In addition, it is possible that the drastic distortion in my sense of time is at least partially the result of the role it's playing in my life. I have practically no needs that are either influenced by time or depend on it, thus making it marginal to me. I felt I'd been in that amazing journey of self-exploration and of endless possibilities for several months. I believe the only people who had experienced strong salvia trips could even accept the fact that such a thing is even possible. I was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to live for such a long time in a utopia within my own mind. And for that, I thank Sally from the bottom of my heart. I've been thinking about this trip a lot, analyzing it, trying to get to a few conclusions. I realized that the heaven I visited symbolized perfection, something that everyone aspires to reach in one way or another. 
The place was not a reward one may receive after death. It has nothing to do with God or with the afterlife. This place is our own mind. When it reaches a state of mental and spiritual transcendence, this is an ideal state of complete liberation of mind and spirit. This trip had extremely influenced me. Thanks to it, I feel I reached a true insight about life. I know that I'm not the first to say it, but I can now say that I truly understand it. From the most complete simplicity comes the greatest bliss. I don't believe I would ever come to this kind of simplicity in real life. But I hope that this past experience would drive me to try and do so in the future. This trip report stood out to me. Um, I'm going to make this kind of a brief commentary. And this just got me thinking about how I was talking to a friend. And he said uh, he knew someone who did a salvia trip. And he lived his, in the salvia trip it seemed like he was in the real life and he could not even remember his life here. And he was living in the 1940s and lived with his family and had a whole entire life back then. And then he woke up from the trip and said, wait, where I, I just lived, a, I just lived a past life. Like I was in that reality. I was in that world. And it's like, it just got me thinking like, what if we are just in a salvia or DMT trip right now? And when we die, we just simply wake up with a bong in our hand and go, whoa, I was just living in a different reality. You know, that's just, that could be entirely possible. It's not crazy because what our mind can imagine starts to be created in reality. Like, for instance, if you're seeing like someone create something like for instance like elon musk's company spacex or just creating like a space shuttle that like a world a, a futuristic world that someone's trying to create it is existent in the imagination and the mind first and it's like where do we get these thoughts of a different kind of life that we have, you simply imagine them um, and to basically free yourself from the limits of your imagination. One line that I really like in this trip report, um, let's see if I can find it. He said, uh, he said something like, yes, he said, absolute freedom of the mind. In fact, the freedom in the truest meaning that there is, you know, and that's one thing I've been aiming for lately, personally, is absolute freedom of the mind. Um, you have people who try to get you to think in their own limited, narrow lens. Because like most people just see through like this narrow fucking lens in life. And, you know, it's whether it's they're constrained by religion or they're constrained by atheism or that there's constrained by the limitations of how people think around them. You know, one thing that really like upsets me about people in the modern day is they don't think deeply about anything. Like, and everything is just like, people just like preach cliches to each other all the time. They never really think for themselves. And, you know, I just feel like to have freedom of mind is the most important you know thing for me to have right now just taking things with a grain of salt sort of letting letting thoughts both the dark and the light the yin and the yang thoughts just sort of pass through your mind so that you're not affected by any of them you're just this fluid mosaic that lets them come and go you know and that's really where i'm happy where you know even though you and I have been through some deep shit in life, we can still deal with these things that bother us, you know, throughout the day or throughout the week that will hit us. We're always going to be bombarded with negativity. You cannot be happy all the time. No matter, even if you're like working with that bartender 
who's just the happiest person, seems like they're happy 24 seven, they never have a bad day in their life. Trust me, even they can have an unhappy moment. I'm not saying, I, I do think the state of someone's mind as far as how happy they are does vary from person to person. There's people who are generally more happy than others, but everyone is bombarded with thoughts that are a challenge. And um, one of the one of the things in life that, you know, people I think would benefit people is to free their mind. Now, I'm not one of those, you know, former stoners who is going to say, yeah, psychedelics are just going to free the mind. They always do. I, I don't um, actually, I actually know that they can do the complete opposite and actually put you in a thought loop. You know, if you overdose or do a combination or you don't know what you're doing, you know, so I'm not just one of those people who just preaches psychedelics will free the mind. In fact, if someone's telling me they're taking psychedelics, like, yo, dude, like I just took DMT and I'll be like, holy shit, like, dude, first of all, like, or do you know what you're doing? You know, because I don't want anyone getting hurt and being, getting unnecessarily hurt and getting trapped in like a thought loop or severe psychosis, which few people make it out, you know? Um, though I do think psychedelics can be medicinal. Um, and speaking of psychedelics being medicinal, I recently got prescribed Zoloft again because I was having repeating thoughts and I haven't taken a prescription med in a long time. Um, and basically like when I took one pill of Zoloft, I, it was a straight two gram dry mushroom trip. It was a straight two gram mushroom trip. I was like outside, I was in the bathroom and I was just like, things were just seeming really like fuzzy and transformed. Like there's like a heaviness in the air that starts to appear and things just appear different. Houses appear different. You see faces and things. And I'm like, dude, like this is a prescription medication for God's sake, you know? And it's literally the exact equivalent of a two gram mushroom trip. So, um, yeah, I, I, I just, I just think that, you know, psychedelics should be given a, given a shot being a prescription med because they are no more dangerous than a prescription medication. There's people who OD on prescription meds all the time, you know? So that's just something I noticed is like, uh, everyone says drugs are bad and yet they're taking Prozac, Zoloft and Percocet. And it's like, what the hell are you talking about? You know? Um, but other than that, uh, this trip report really caught my eye. Like I always read a few before I choose the next one. Um, and you know, it's, I thought, you know, it was really interesting how he actually saw heaven and that everything was breathing and alive on salvia uh you know and this just shows you salvia can give you a completely different experience than just oh this guy transformed into a doorknob or a doormat but you know this is still a, a substance that is probably the most um dangerous to mess with um but yeah that, that's about all i have for this commentary um i hope you guys the best and i hope you have a great day